There's something happening in doctors' offices across the world that needs to stop immediately. Patients walk in describing burning feet, trembling hands, sudden dizziness, and crushing fatigue that makes their previous life feel like a distant memory. Their blood work comes back clean. Their basic nerve tests appear normal. And then comes the devastating response that ruins everything. It's probably just stress. Maybe try getting more sleep. What these patients don't know, and what their doctors often miss, is that they could be experiencing one of the most overlooked and dangerous complications of Sjogren's syndrome. While most people know this autoimmune condition for causing dry eyes and dry mouth, research reveals a shocking truth that will change how you view this disease forever. Studies show that neurological involvement occurs in up to 60% of people with Sjogren's syndrome. That's not a small subset, that's the majority. Yet neurological symptoms are rarely tested for, almost never explained properly, and frequently dismissed as psychological when they occur in the early stages. The result? Thousands of people suffering with permanent, progressive nerve damage that could have been prevented if someone had simply known what to look for. Today, we're exposing the neurological complications of Sjogren's syndrome that could be silently destroying your nervous system right now. If you've ever felt like your symptoms don't match your test results, or if someone you love is struggling with unexplained neurological problems, this information could literally save their life. But before we dive deep into these hidden dangers, I need you to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement helps us reach more people who desperately need this information. The peripheral nervous system under attack. Let's start with the most common neurological complication that catches nearly every patient completely off guard, peripheral neuropathy. This isn't just medical jargon. This is your body's alarm system going haywire in ways that will fundamentally change how you experience the world around you. Peripheral neuropathy affects between 17% and 39% of patients with Sjogren's syndrome, with axonal sensory motor polyneuropathy being the most prevalent subtype. When Sjogren's syndrome attacks these nerves, the damage doesn't announce itself with dramatic symptoms. Instead, it creeps in with sensations so bizarre that most people assume they must be imagining things. The attack isn't random. Your immune system mistakes your peripheral nerves for foreign invaders and systematically destroys them. The damage starts small. Maybe your sock feels bunched up even when it isn't, or warm shower water suddenly feels like acid burning your skin. You might notice that the bed sheets feel like sandpaper against your feet, or that your legs buzz with static electricity even when you're lying perfectly still. Perhaps the top of your thigh goes numb after a short walk, or your hands tingle from simply holding your phone. These aren't isolated incidents or signs of aging. These are your sensory nerves being methodically attacked and destroyed by your own immune system. The truly devastating part is how often these early warning signs are dismissed. Women over 40 are particularly vulnerable to having their symptoms attributed to stress, poor circulation, or being overly sensitive. Meanwhile, the nerve damage continues progressing, potentially becoming irreversible if left untreated. Two types of nerve destruction you must recognize. Not all peripheral neuropathy manifests the same way, and understanding the difference could determine whether you get the right diagnosis and treatment. There are two major types of nerve damage that Sjogren's syndrome can cause, each with distinct symptoms and requiring different approaches to testing and management. Small fiber neuropathy targets the thin, delicate nerves responsible for carrying pain and temperature signals, and can be diagnosed by punch skin biopsy results that identify decreased intraepidermal nerve fiber density. When these small nerve fibers are damaged, the signals they send become distorted or trapped in loops of malfunction. This creates a living nightmare where normal sensations transform into torture. A gentle breeze might feel like sandpaper scraping your skin. The light touch of clothing can feel like needles piercing your flesh. 
Research shows that 90% of patients experienced burning pains, 87.5% had numbness, 82.5% experienced tingling, and 55% suffered from allodynia. Some patients describe it as feeling like their skin is constantly on fire, while others experience electric shocks running through their arms and legs. The most frustrating aspect of small fiber neuropathy is that it remains completely invisible to routine medical testing. Standard blood work, MRIs, and even nerve conduction studies will come back normal, leading doctors to conclude that nothing is wrong. The gold standard for diagnosing small fiber neuropathy is a skin punch biopsy, a small sample taken from your leg to measure the density of nerve fibers. Large fiber neuropathy attacks the bigger nerves responsible for reflexes, vibration sense, muscle strength, and your body's awareness of its position in space. When these nerves are damaged, the symptoms shift dramatically. Instead of burning pain, you experience numbness that feels like your feet are wrapped in foam or like you're walking on a thick mattress. You start tripping over your own feet because you can't feel the ground beneath you. This type of nerve damage is particularly dangerous for older adults because it directly leads to falls. And when you're over 60, one serious fall can result in fractures, loss of independence, and a cascade of health problems that fundamentally alter your quality of life. When motor control begins to fail, now we enter territory that becomes impossible to ignore, motor neuropathy where Sjogren's syndrome stops attacking your sensory nerves and begins destroying the nerves that control your muscles. When this happens, your body doesn't just feel different, it starts to betray you in ways that are both physically and emotionally devastating. Motor neuropathy manifests as a gradual loss of the precise control you've taken for granted your entire life. You might first notice it when trying to open a jar, your hand suddenly trembles, despite your brain sending clear signals to grip steadily. During meals, your hand might shake unexpectedly, causing you to drop your fork and feel embarrassed about something that should be automatic. The progression continues with muscle weakness that affects everyday activities. Your grip strength noticeably decreases, even though you haven't injured your hands. Simple tasks like brushing your teeth or holding a phone become surprisingly exhausting. You start dropping objects, mugs, pens, your toothbrush, not because you're careless, but because the motor signals from your brain aren't reaching your muscles effectively. One of the telling early signs is visible muscle wasting, particularly in the small muscles of your hands. You can check for this yourself by examining the fleshy area between your thumb and index finger. This space should normally be full and firm. If it appears hollow or sunken, like the muscle is caving in, this could indicate motor nerve damage and muscle atrophy. The emotional impact of motor neuropathy cannot be understated. Adults who have been independent their entire lives suddenly find themselves unable to perform basic tasks. This isn't just about physical limitation, it's about the loss of identity and confidence that comes with your body's betrayal. The silent assault on your autonomic system. Perhaps the most insidious and dangerous neurological complication of Sjogren's syndrome is autonomic neuropathy, damage to the nervous system that controls all the functions you never think about because they happen automatically. Your heartbeat, digestion, bladder control, temperature regulation, and blood pressure management all depend on autonomic nerves functioning properly. Sjogren's is the second most common cause of autonomic neuropathy after diabetes and has been associated with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS, orthostatic hypotension, and other forms of dysautonomia. Research shows that in a series of 13 patients with Sjogren's syndrome who underwent evaluation for suspected autonomic impairment, Eight met the criteria for POTS based on clinical features and autonomic testing. 
When you stand up, your heart rate spikes dramatically, sometimes increasing by 30 beats per minute or more in adults. You feel dizzy, lightheaded, or like you might faint. Your vision might blur, your hands might shake, and your chest might pound as if you've just sprinted up several flights of stairs, even though you simply got up from a chair. Autonomic neuropathy also wreaks havoc on your digestive system. Your stomach might stop emptying properly, a condition called gastroparesis, leaving you feeling bloated, nauseous, or uncomfortably full after eating just a few bites. You might swing unpredictably between diarrhea and constipation, sometimes within the same week. Temperature regulation becomes another daily challenge. Some patients feel like they're overheating in mild weather, while others experience chills when everyone else is comfortable. Your sweating patterns might become erratic. Your face might sweat profusely while your arms remain completely dry, or you might stop sweating entirely in some areas of your body. Research shows that anti-muscarinic autoantibodies, which block autonomic signaling, have been found in the saliva, serum, gastrointestinal tract, and other tissues associated with autonomic dysfunction in patients with Sjogren's syndrome. When the brain and spinal cord become targets, we now reach the most critical and potentially catastrophic territory, central nervous system involvement, where Sjogren syndrome stops attacking peripheral nerves and begins assaulting your brain and spinal cord directly. When this occurs, we're no longer discussing discomfort or quality of life issues. We're talking about neurological emergencies that can result in permanent disability or death if not recognized and treated immediately. Studies report that central nervous system manifestations occur in 3.6% of patients, often mimicking clinical symptoms of primary progressive or relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Central nervous system complications can develop gradually or strike suddenly, but they always represent a medical crisis requiring urgent intervention. You might experience severe headaches that feel completely different from any you've had before, deep, throbbing pain that presses behind your eyes or grips your skull like a vice. These aren't tension headaches or migraines. They're signs of brain inflammation that can progress to life-threatening complications. Brain fog becomes more than just forgetfulness. It transforms into genuine cognitive confusion, where you lose track of where you are, forget common words mid-sentence, or find yourself unable to follow simple conversations. You might become lost in familiar places or struggle to read and write at your previous level. Vision changes signal potential optic nerve involvement. You might experience blurry vision that comes and goes, see double, lose peripheral vision, or develop extreme sensitivity to light that isn't related to dry eyes. These symptoms can indicate inflammation in the optic nerves or visual cortex that could result in permanent vision loss without prompt treatment. The combination of severe neck stiffness with balance problems represents a particularly alarming red flag. A rigid neck with no clear cause, paired with new coordination problems or unexplained stumbling, could signal meningitis, inflammation of the protective lining around your brain and spinal cord. Research shows that Sjogren's syndrome can cause autoimmune encephalitis involving inflammation of brain tissue, transverse myelitis affecting the spinal cord, and mononeuritis multiplex involving sudden nerve death in clusters. These complications can cause seizures, memory loss, paralysis, and intense pain. Getting the right tests and treatment. Now that you understand the scope of neurological complications that Sjogren's syndrome can cause, let's discuss how to get proper testing and treatment before irreversible damage occurs. The key is knowing exactly what to ask for and how to advocate for yourself when medical professionals might not immediately recognize these connections. For suspected small fiber neuropathy, 
The gold standard test is a skin punch biopsy, which involves taking small samples from your distal leg and proximal thigh to measure intraepidermal nerve fiber density. This test can definitively diagnose small fiber neuropathy even when standard nerve conduction studies are completely normal. When seeking diagnosis, be prepared with specific language. Tell your doctor, I'm experiencing persistent burning, tingling, and pain symptoms that don't correlate with my normal test results. I need evaluation for small fiber neuropathy, including skin punch biopsy. I also want to be screened for Sjogren's syndrome as a potential underlying cause. For autonomic symptoms like POTS, diagnosis can often begin in your primary care doctor's office with simple vital sign measurements during position changes, though tilt table testing provides more formal documentation. Research shows that treatments like rituximab can sometimes lead to complete symptom resolution in Sjogren's-related small fiber neuropathy when conventional treatments have failed. However, the window for effective treatment may be limited. Nerve damage that has progressed too far may be irreversible, which is why early recognition and intervention are absolutely critical. We've covered a lot of ground today, and I know this information can feel overwhelming. But understanding these neurological complications of Sjogren's syndrome represents the difference between years of suffering with progressive, preventable nerve damage and getting the proper treatment that could preserve your neurological function and quality of life. The most important message is this. You are not imagining your symptoms. Burning feet, trembling hands, sudden dizziness, crushing fatigue, and cognitive difficulties are not signs of anxiety or aging when they occur in the context of autoimmune disease. They represent measurable, diagnosable, and potentially treatable neurological complications that deserve serious medical attention. If this information resonates with your experience or that of someone you love, don't wait for permission to seek specialized care. Demand comprehensive neurological evaluation. Request testing for small fiber neuropathy. Insist on screening for Sjogren's syndrome and other autoimmune conditions. Your persistence could literally save your nervous system from irreversible damage. If this video helped you understand the neurological complications of Sjogren's syndrome in a new way, I want you to type yes in the comments below. That simple word motivates us to continue producing content that could change lives and prevent unnecessary suffering. Please don't keep this information to yourself. Hit that like button to help this video reach more people who need this crucial information. Share it with anyone who's struggling with unexplained neurological symptoms or has been diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome. Subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell so you never miss content that could impact your health or the health of someone you love. Thank you for watching, for caring about your health, and for being part of this community. Until next time, stay informed, stay advocated, and never give up on getting the answers you deserve.